Hello, it's Throwback Wednesday. Um, I don't know when you're watching this, it's probably not even Wednesday, but it is Wednesday right now. I am gonna do an old fashioned coding train style coding challenge. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to make the uh, bouncing DVD video logo, and I'm going to attempt to do it in 10 minutes. I'm sure something's gonna go horribly wrong. I should never use this timer. Nothing ever, no good never comes from it, but I'm gonna try. Here's the one thing I'm excited about here with this challenge. If you are a beginner, if you have never programmed before, I'm hoping that this is a coding challenge that you could follow and actually possibly create yourself. Um, but, uh, so beginners welcome. Um, I'm gonna try to talk through all the concepts. I'm gonna use very few, the basic beginner concepts of programming in JavaScript using the P5 library. Go to editor.p5js.org. I'm gonna pull that up in a second where I'll be typing the code. So this is the bouncing DVD logo. And I think I could, I, I got plenty of time. I'm gonna wait like 20 seconds just to see if it hits the corner. Come on. Come on, oh, oh no. Okay, anyway, I should probably move on. So what do I, what do I need? Oh, and I wanted to also do a quick shout out and thank you to uh, Mike Boyd, who uh, learned to code from a lot of different resources, including the coding train, I think. Well, check out this video. He makes this really awesome game and also at some point tries to make a bouncing DVD logo, which is where this idea came from. So let me move over to the whiteboard um, and just, just talk through a couple concepts. So I'm gonna create something in HTML uh, uh, called a canvas, and I'm gonna use the P5 library, which has a nice function for doing that called create canvas. And I'm gonna make my canvas 800 by 600 because this is four, has an aspect ratio of four by three. 400 times, 100, times 200 is, is 800 by 600, and that's the aspect ratio of old timey television tubes. Not like this fancy YouTube with your like, 16 by nine aspect ratio, woo, it's so fancy. Um, and then I need to draw an image of that DVD logo. Um, and I need to place it randomly somewhere in this canvas. Um, I'm, its location is gonna be defined by the corner. That's gonna be, sorry, it's X, sorry, X, Y location. And then I need to determine when it hits the edge and have it bounce off that edge. And according to my research, I actually did some research into the science behind this DVD logo thing, which you can actually, there's all sorts of formula to calculate the probability of when it's gonna hit the corner and all sorts of stuff like that. I'm gonna include a link to that article in this video's description. Um, it is always moving in a direction where it's X, speed and its y speed are equal. So essentially at a 45, it already starts at a 45 degree angle pointing down and then ricochets off of the edges and maybe someday hits the corner. I got seven minutes left, let's go. All right, so the first thing that I wanna do is, I already forgot. <laughs> Ah! Oh, go to the video, go to the P5 editor. This is editor.p5js.org. And you can see here, I've made a canvas, it's 800 by 600, and I've drawn a background of zero. That means black. So this draw function is looping over and over again, and setup is happening just once. Set up the canvas, draw that background over and over again. So what I need is I need to keep track of that X and the Y position of the uh, DVD logo. So I need a variable. I need x to store the x position and y to store the y position. And by the way, the way the canvas works is 0, 0 is in the top left here. This is, this is x equals 0, y equals 0, all the way up to x equals 799. So if it's 800 wide, 0 through 799. Think about that. I know I'm going too fast. Um, check my other tutorials where I speak hopefully a little bit slower. All right, so I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna set x equal to 400 and y equal to 300. And I'm actually just gonna draw a rectangle that's like uh, 80 by 60. So that's, sorry, a rectangle at x and y. So this, I wanna draw a rectangle at x and y. And I want the width of the rectangle to be 80 and the height of the rectangle to be 60. These are P5JS, the JavaScript library P5JS functions to draw things like rectangles and circles and lines. You can look them up in the reference, which I will also link to in this video's description. Okay, there we go. Look, there it is, woohoo! Now, I need to have something that tells me uh, it's rate of change along the x-axis and rate of change along the y-axis. I should note that y points down. Y points down, X points to the right. So if this were three, uh, this were three, I heard somebody say, oh, in the actual thing, it moves like 10, 10 units per, 
per, per frame. I don't know what the old, but we can think of how many pixels does it move down into the, down into the right. So let's try with 10. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call that x speed, and I'm going uh, to have y speed. Um, these, by the way, up here are known as global variables. So they're variables that I can use throughout the program. I want to initialize them in setup and then use them in draw. So I'm going to say x speed equals 10, y speed equals 10. I need separate variables because when it bounces on one side, it, the y continues to go down, but the x reverses direction. Or when it's on the top, the y changes direction, but the x stays the same. So then what I need to do, let's just make sure this runs. It runs. What I need to do is say x equals x plus x speed. Y, and let, let's just do that. So every time draws looping, x equals x plus, oh, goodbye, it's gone. Run that again. Look, it's moving. Oh, it's gone. So x is changing every time draw loops, which is like around 30 frames per second. Uh, and then I'm going to say y equals y plus y speed. And there we go. It's moving down. You can see that. It's moving down and to the right. And now for the exciting part. <laughs> I mean, isn't this all exciting? I need to figure out how do I know, how do I turn it around? So I need to check. There's something in programming called an if statement. When do I want to turn it around? I want it to turn around if it hits the edge. If it hits the edge, change the amount of, change the value of x speed, reverse its direction. So if x speed is positive, then x speed should be negative. So I can say if x equals, and this is a little bit flawed, but I'm going to do this right now, equals the width. Width is a variable, by the way, that's keeping track of the width of the canvas, which is 800. Then x speed equals x speed times negative 1. Multiply any number by negative 1. 10 becomes negative 10. Negative 10 becomes 10. Oh, I only have three minutes left. Got to keep moving here. OK, there we go. Look, oh boy. Let's add also uh, a y if y equals the height. See what happens? Oh, it kind of, what? Oh, what's going on here? Let's, um, <laughs> let's change where it starts. I'm just going to let it um, start a little bit higher so you can actually see. Look, it bounced. But one thing I'm not taking into an account, its x, y position is this corner. So when it equals the edge, it's actually sitting here off of the screen. So I need to know in this corner. So actually what I want to say is when x plus its width, which is 80, plus 80 equals width, then reverse its speed. Look at that. Ah, and then when y plus what? 60 equals height. Oh, whoa. Oh, but I don't want to change the x speed. I want the y speed to change when it's y. Boom, boom. Ah, this is looking good. OK. Oh, now I've got to do the other, I've got to do the other spots. Well, I can, I can use something called an else if. So I can say else if x equals 0, x speed equals x speed times negative 1. But you know what? There's another way I could do this. I can actually say or or if x equals 0. I want to do the same thing. So this weird double pipe symbol means or. So, and I, by the way, to test if something is equals, I have to use two equals. Two equals, and I can actually use three, and that's a whole other story. In one minute, I don't have time to get to it. But um, there's a reason why you might use double equals or triple equals. But just more than one equals is asking the question. So now I'm going to say or y equals 0. <laughs> uh, let's look at this. And, um, and then I need a close bracket. Uh, and then let's see, what, what's going on? I'm, I'm missing something here. Oh, I've got some, an extra parentheses. There we go. Uh, OK, let's, there we go. OK, um, let me give myself a little more room here, a little more room here. OK, here we go. Let's run this. Ah, line 32, token, missing token, unexpected. Ah, OK, here we go. Let's, oh no, ah, the bug happened. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh hi. I said I wasn't going to edit anything, but I, I had to take a little like short break there because my code disappeared in the browser. Um, then the timer went to zero, but now my code is back. It was some, some mystical magic floated into this room, but this is where I was a moment ago. I now have two if statements checking to see if 
This rectangle hits the right side, the left side, right side or the left side, reverse the x speed. The bottom or the top, reverse the y speed. And Simon, loyal viewer, Simon pointed out that another way I could write this is just like this. Set the speed equal to negative of itself. And there we go. Now, now for the really exciting moment. <laughs> Let's get that DVD logo. So I've already downloaded this PNG file of the DVD logo itself. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little arrow here. I am going to add a file. Then I'm going to drag the DVD logo file here, upload it. I'm going to say I am done. We can see now the DVD logo is part of my project. So I'm going to add some new code. I'm going to have a variable called DVD. I'm going to add something called preload. Preload is a block of code, a function where it's good to write things that you want to happen. Like <laughs> I know I said set up the stuff that happens at the beginning. Preload is like the pre-setup. And something that I want to do there is like load media assets. So I'm going to say dvd.pn, what, what did I call it? dvd underscore logo dot png. By the way, in the meantime, I selected this auto refresh thing so that it's like, a, it's rerunning the code every time I make a change. Um, and now what I can do is instead of drawing a rectangle, by the way, this is a way I can turn off a line of code. It's really called a code comment. I'm going to say draw the DVD logo. And I can take this exact line of code. But instead of saying rectangle, I can say image. And then I can say image, oh, what did I call it? DVD at that same location. So look at that. There's the DVD logo. Now, I might have messed with its dimensions. I can actually just use its native dimensions. Ooh, but now it's not bouncing correctly. So let's actually look at what its dimensions are. I can just, in the Apple Finder, I can see it's um, 128. Oh, I can't say it. 128 by 76. So I can change those numbers. But the truth of the matter is it's not such a great idea to have hard-coded numbers in your code, like 128 and 76. Um, but the nice thing is I can actually say dvd.width. So the image itself, the DVD image, knows its own width. And I can also say uh, instead plus a DVD, DVD height. And now it, whoa, no, no? Oh boy, I have done something bad. I have done something bad, terrible, big mistake in coding. Aha. So it's very, it's generally not such a good idea to check if something's exactly equal. Because eh, you never know. I mean, I'm saying, oh, of course, ah, and oh my goodness. This is really, really bad. So it only worked by accident because, because oh, I can't believe I didn't think of this. Because that the multiple, right, if this starts at like 100 and I'm adding 10 to it every time, like, and this width is, is 800, I am going to at some point get to the fact that it's going to be equal to 800. But if I, if it's, if this, width is like 128, x plus 128 plus some multiple of 10 is never going to actually end up equaling uh, 800. So I just want to uh, basically just check if it goes past the width and the height. And I'm not sure. And, or what I probably want to do is resize the image to be something. But this is now going to be fine. OK, so I can close, move this console down. I should do this again. <laughs> This is actually what programming is, by the way. Uh, and now, here we go. Bouncing DVD logo. Some things I want to do to this. Number one is I want it to start in a random uh, position every time so I can use the random function. So this will now, every time I run the code, it'll start. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's stuck. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, God. Everything. Oh, this is the worst. <laughs> This is the worst. All right, there's another problem here. Oh, because ah, it's not, now I'm not using integer math and I'm letting it random. Oh, this is what I need to do. Let me separate this out. I'm going to say, I'm going to be very strict about this DVD logo. I'm going to say, if it goes past the width, reverse its direction and set it to that spot. Shuffle it back. And I got to do this now separately. I got to do the same thing. Then I'm going to set it back equal to zero. So 
there's this issue that can happen where it can go kind of like past the edge and then not make it all the way back on, I think. Uh, and so I'm going to do this now for the X and the Y. But I am now made this a uh, little bit more complicated, but I'm saying, okay, when it gets to the edge, if it went past the edge, just slide it back on before you turn around, right? Just set it back to this location, and this is not right with minus dvd dot width, right? That's where I want to set it back to. Otherwise, if it gets to the left, set it back to the left and keep going. If it gets to the bottom, and this, of course, is height, my, if y plus dvd dot height is greater than height, then and set it back to height minus dvd dot height. Okay. <laughs> yes! Okay, now, we gotta do something else. We gotta do something else. I've gotta add a red, green, and blue value. So I'm just gonna say RGB. You can declare three variables at once, by the way, with commas. And then I want those values to be, you're gonna see why, I want those values to be some random number between, to be honest, between zero and 255. Uh, and um, then I am going to say tint RGB. So tint is a function that allows me to tint the image. Look, so every time I run this, it's going to be a different color. Now I think I want to like guarantee, I want it to be, to, to, to have some amount of brightness. So I could do like a hue, saturation, brightness thing, but I'm just going to limit the bottom range to 10. And then every time it hits one of the edge, edges, I'm actually going to put this in a separate function called function pick, pick color. And I'm going to say pick color. I'm going to call that function. So this is me making up my, a new function and then calling that function because I want to reuse that code. So in all of these cases, and really, I will to this later, you know. there's got to be a nicer way to write this. And here we go. So now, we are done. Oh, stop. <laughs> and thank you for watching this coding challenge. I'm sorry this turned into something of a mess. I uh, hope that you will take this and make your own variation on it, uh, play with it, use different imagery, different way of moving, different way of checking the corner. Maybe you'll make some kind of beautiful particle effect when it hits the corner, and maybe you will think of a new idea, and who cares about the corner? How about the middle? What if it crosses the perfect middle? I don't know. The world of the Bouncing DVD logo is now yours to play with. I don't know, hope you learned something, had a little bit of fun. If you want to learn more about programming, I basically do this exact same thing in my Foundations of JavaScript with P5.js tutorial series, but kind of step through all these concepts quite a bit more slowly. Um, I don't know whether that's going to be helpful or interesting to you, but you're welcome to watch it. Thanks, and see you in a future coding challenge.